Hello and welcome to our Easter Saturday Reflection. My name is Richard and I'm part of the church family at Holy Trinity Church in Aylesbury. It's lunchtime on Saturday and the two women, tear-stained and dishevelled, sit exhausted at the kitchen table, talking quietly. It's been a long night. They've been awake for most of it. They managed to catch some broken sleep in the early hours, but their minds were restless, full of the, of the images and sounds of Friday. Tears flowed again. They recalled the flogging, the baying crowd as he stumbled out of the city, the sound of the nails being pounded into timber. One of them visibly shivered, reliving the moment the cross pulled upright, crashed down into its footings. The convulsion of the body, the gasps of pain, the rasping breath. They, they'd done what they could. It wasn't much, but unlike the men, they'd stayed with him. They'd watched him fade away and his last words just about summed it all up. It is finished. That's precisely how it felt. What might have been was shattered. Any sense of meaning and purpose was gone. Their hopes and dreams just died with him. Frustration welled up. They needed to do something. But it was the Sabbath. They had no choice but to rest. Compared to Friday, the world seemed strangely still. Yesterday, Jesus spoke. They remembered his voice. And it was as if God had spoken too. The afternoon darkness had been eerie and the earthquake just terrifying. But only silence now. They'd helped Joseph and Nicodemus get the body down. Those two men had risked a lot. They'd had to work fast. The sun was setting. The Sabbath was sacred. They'd followed the men to the tomb. It's so important to get the right one tomorrow. And then a flicker of hope, recalling another tomb in Bethany. They'd seen Lazarus a few days ago. They had to prepare Jesus' body properly. It was such a rush yesterday, but it was the law. They would have to wait. Only six hours or so, and then there'd be burial spices to prepare. For now, though, they just had to wait and rest. Didn't feel much like eating. A lot to be done later. And Sunday was going to be an early start. So they decided to get what sleep they could. Easter weekends tend to focus on two days. Friday and Sunday get all the press. That contrast between death and life, sadness and joy, despair and hope. But we mustn't ignore Saturday. Because life is full of them. It's that time that lies between the struggle and the solution, the question and the answer, the hurt and the healing. And they start with a, with a, with a death, the lost job, a broken relationship, the diagnosis, the loss of a loved one, shattered hopes and dreams. How do I make sense of it all? This wasn't the plan. God is on mute. Saturday's silent torments us. Is he angry? Did I disappoint him? Why doesn't he do something? What should I do? I feel helpless and hopeless. There's not much we can do except be present to the raw reality of what is. And as we contemplate the death, we feel somehow entombed. There's just the silence and the stillness. Saturdays seem to bring us ultimately to the end of ourselves, to a, a place of letting go and letting God. Nothing we can do except rest, wait 
remember, wonder, hope and pray. Perhaps that's what faith looks like. We desperately want joy to replace sorrow, but that doesn't seem to be the way God operates. He doesn't remove us from our sorrows. He joins us in them and he reshapes them. And somehow a new kind of joy emerges. When Jesus died, he trusted that God wouldn't leave him in the tomb. We can trust God won't leave us in our struggles. You see, the silence wasn't absence. The stillness wasn't apathy. In Jesus, God's triumph over death is within it, not apart from it. The tomb, if you like, becomes a womb from which death gives birth to life. And what breaks out is more glorious than what entered. Imagine the joy of the two Marys tomorrow as they see the risen Jesus. But remember, it took the sorrow, the silence and the stillness of a Saturday to get them there. For his reasons and his purposes, God inserts a Saturday between our Fridays and Sundays. Perhaps, like the Sabbath, it's there to remind us to rest and trust in his all-sufficiency. Rest, wait, remember, wonder, hope and pray. It's a holy Saturday because the God who loves us to death is present with us. He doesn't abandon us. Sunday will come, but it's unlikely to be in the way that we expect. In the garden, Mary didn't recognise Jesus immediately, and nor did the two disciples on the Emmaus Road. He was the same, but very different. He's making all things new, and one day the ultimate of Sundays will arrive, and when he appears, we shall be like him, and we will see him as he is. No more Fridays, no more Saturdays, just Sunday.